Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to iTouch App Reviewers. In this video, we're going to be talking about the brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro and which one you should get if you are considering it. So first off, I just wanna say this is the top of the line MacBook Pro now. It has completely replaced the 15 inch. So if you're looking for a 15 inch, you're gonna have to buy one on the used market or from another seller that has you know stock of the old ones. The 13 inch did not get any changes, so don't even bother looking there. There is no 14 inch. So let's look at these 16 inch ones. So they both say new here, and you can see the price difference is about 400 for the two that they're showing, but you do have to remember there are a lot of customizations that can be had here. So let's first take a look at the cheaper model here. So this one starts out at about 2,400 bucks, and from what I have heard from reviews, this thing rivals last generation's maxed out version. And this is the base model. So for $2,399, you're getting a 2.6 gigahertz, six core ninth gen i7 with turbo boost up to four and a half gigahertz, 16 gigs of RAM, the 5300M chip, 512 gigabyte SSD. Now, before we get too much into specs here, a lot of people wonder, well, what's the difference? Should I upgrade if I have the 15 inch MacBook Pro? And my answer to that is if you have a 2017 or newer, don't even bother. It's not really worth it to you in most cases, unless of course you are feeling slowness, your workflow that you do. So the 16 inch will get you um, the escape key, which a lot of people are asking for. It's a physical button, 16 inch screen, a new keyboard, which actually has a millimeter of travel, whereas the current butterfly mechanism has half a millimeter of travel. So you will feel a difference there. So I think this one will be more durable. Now for the cheaper one here, you can upgrade to the uh, eight core model for $300 extra. They'll put that chip in there. For most people, if you're looking at this base model, this one's not really worth it. Um, 16 gigs or 32, 64 is ridiculous for 400 extra dollars. But of course, you know, if you want to go there, you can go there. Um, and then for the graphics card, uh, I think this mid one is pretty decent. If it was me, I would go for the top of the line one. It's only an extra $200. And then for storage, obviously that's, you know, pay to play. If you want more, get it. I usually stick with 512. It's been fine. Uh, but I think next time I'll go for one terabyte. Let's take a quick look at the more expensive one. Uh, this is the one that I would probably get if I were to redo this. Uh, and it's crazy to think, because I've seen some benchmarks here, and I have the 2018 MacBook Pro 15 inch, and I maxed it out to about $3,500, $3,700. And you can actually get one that rivals the performance of mine for a fraction of that cost which is pretty cool. Kind of sucks for me though, but it is what it is. So if I was gonna get one, I would get the 2.3 gigahertz eight core right here. This one's not really worth it, especially for the thermal limitations of this laptop. I would then opt for the 32 gigs of RAM, which I have right now. It is awesome. It's definitely worth the $400 to me. Maybe it is to you, maybe not. And then for graphics, I would go with eight gig right here. And then this one already comes with one terabyte SSD. So for 32.99, you could get a computer that is better than mine for about $500 less than mine with way more storage and way better specs. So this is the one I would get if I could redo it. Honestly, I could probably sell mine for probably 2,800 or 3,000 and just pick up this one if I wanted, but I'll just stick with mine for now. Now it's important to understand what you're getting with this. Any of these, you are getting top of the line specs from Apple as far as a notebook is concerned. Any one of these laptops, even the base model here, will, should last you for years. So even if you opt for this base model right here, this is as cheap as they get, 2,400 bucks, I think you will be set for at least three years. So this is kind of what I would recommend if you are getting into programming or something like that, but you don't have a big budget. This thing should be able to do almost everything you want it to do. And if you were gonna opt for something, if you're a programmer, obviously 32 gigs of RAM would be helpful, but this is a totally respectable setup. I almost never used to recommend the base model of anything on Apple's website, but for this, this is really good. And again, I have seen some results on YouTube, preliminary results, mind you, but people were putting this thing up against last year's top of the line and it was hanging with it, which is ridiculous because it's like one and a half thousand dollars cheaper. But if you are a professional, this is of course the combination that I would do, about 3,300 bucks. Uh, it's, it's not a terribly overpriced machine. In fact, this thing would actually be, uh, like I said, cheaper than the one that I got. So this is the way to go if you are a pro and you are doing you know, 4K video edits like I am all the time, uh, this is probably the uh, one you're gonna wanna get. But anyways, let me know your thoughts on this MacBook Pro down below. Uh, this is a quick image of what the keyboard looks like from, I guess, Forbes. I hate Forbes, but this is the new keyboard with the physical escape key now, which actually I would really like, uh, as well as the keyboard. You can see it's a little bit more raised than it used to be. Uh, it's got about a millimeter of travel, like I said, instead of just half a millimeter. 
But anyways, that's all I got for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, hit it with a big thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.